Hey everyone, my name is Justin Woodring. Today we'll be looking at unit testing in Rust. Now, if you've ever used unit tests in some other language like Java or C Sharp or something like that, you know, doing .NET development or something, you probably just had a tiny aneurysm when I mentioned unit testing, and that's just because you've probably had a terrible experience with unit testing. I know I have, I know a lot of other people have had terrible experiences with unit testing, typically because there's about 30 different testing frameworks and they kind of come and go with popularity and they stop working over time, especially if you're maintaining legacy applications. These The tests kind of fall apart. and um, It's not even just the actual tests themselves falling apart due to old packages. It's the testing frameworks themselves fall out of favor. And so usually if you're looking at a big project, there could be like three or four different testing frameworks in it. And it's just because someone came along and kept doing it in different testing frameworks. Like, you know, if you look something like .NET, you got like X unit and such and such unit, whatever. Anyway, today we're looking at unit testing in Rust, and the unit testing in Rust is a totally different experience. And, I mean, probably the longest part of this video is just going to be me ranting about how I don't like unit tests, because once we get to the actual te unit testing in Rust, you'll see it's very simple, and that unit testing in Rust is a first-class feature. Um, so, yeah, let's dive in. Hopefully, we'll be in and out within five minutes, and... That'll be just another short tutorial showing you how you can improve your life with Rust. Okay, so I'm here in uh, VS Code, and we're just going to get started. Um, like I said, if you've never done um, just Rust in general, and you've only used unit tests in some other language, then you're going to be probably blown away and astounded by how easy it is to do it in Rust. So we're just going to go down to the bottom and just go create a new project. Um, so... In this case, we're going to create a library, and the reason I'm going to create a library is because the library actually has default Rust testing code in it. Now, creating a test is not hard at all, but it's even easier if you start off with a library. Um, and if you ever need a sample, I guess you go just create a library and copy it out and paste it into your typical binary Rust application, but it doesn't really matter. So, I'm just going to create my Rust project. Rust. Um, yeah. Project. There we go. So... That's my new library. So if I go in here, you can see that it's already created some stuff for us. Um, this is just the sample stuff that gets created every single time you do anything, like just do a starter in Rust. So you'll notice that because I created a library, we've got a lib.rs and no um, main.rs. And that's fine because, again, it's a library. So ignore that. Um, this, the difference between a main binary file is, like I said, they're just going to, for a template, they're just going to throw in a, um, they're going to throw in a little print line function in the main. But you know, if you start off with a library, the default, they're going to throw in a basic add function, and they're also going to put some tests in for you, at least one, just because you know, it's Rust. And to be honest, the principles of Rust are, well, failure concurrency, safety, and speed. And for a language that's entirely built on the principles of basically sacrificing developer time. And even if that means compile time for runtime of runtime efficiency and safety later, it makes sense that Rust uh, would also include tests as a factor in that, which is not surprising. So, um, this right here is already ready to go. So we're just gonna cd into our Rust project. Cargo test. That's done. It literally built the test for us. Now it says it ran zero tests. So just a couple different types of tests, um, but the main one. Super easy. The easiest one is literally just, um, yeah, it's literally just run uh, these, these um, the first test, the unit test to start off. So um, the doc tests are a little bit different. These are tests that are run if, when you're generating documentation. So, and probably some other video I'll cover generating documentation. We'll probably get to that. But um, right now we're literally just covering the basic unit tests. So anyway, that's it. You're done. You've literally already created one test and you've already run one test this is not complicated at all how do we do that well we create a function and we decorate it with test that simple that's unit testing in rust now you'd probably want to break the, your test out of the file that actually includes the code so this if you've ever never done namespacing in rust is not complicated to do so this will just take a few moments here we're going to create a folder here and then we're going to go up so we see how we have mod tests there now we can do mod tests like this Inside this folder, we need to create a mod.rs file, and that's where we're just going to list the files that we plan to have. So, now in here, we're just going to go adder.rs. 
go into lib, copy this into adder.rs. And this is going to change the namespace a little bit, but not much. Um, it would actually technically be the equivalent of putting the... Um, if we were going to copy directly, it would be the equivalent of copying this into this mod.rs file. But I don't really like putting um, Rust code into mod.rs files. Those are for visibility of folder structures. So um, we're just going to separate it into its little file here for adder. And that's basically that. Um, this config test thing right here, we can actually move this up here if we want to. That basically says that this code should only compile if we're actually testing. So that's a good way to keep your binaries, your runtime binaries smaller. Um, and it also, yeah, limits compilation time because this is only done for the actual tests themselves, which is nice. Um, it's basically conditionally uh, compiling that code there. So we can just go ahead and make sure we've got that code. In there. Yeah, that's right there. So let's copy that out. This thing's gonna throw a little error at us because it doesn't know where ad what where ad came from. So what we're gonna do is worth pointing out here. This is a public function, so we just go up here and we go use create colon add, and that's done. That function is now there. So um, go here mod adder. That's basically everything you need. Your things ready to go. So just go down here and run the test again. Oh look. It works the way we expect it to. Notice that the namespace now has adder in it. Um, this is really cool because, you know, you can basically scope your tests and give them meaningful, um, just give them kind of meaning to what they're testing just through the namespacing itself and then the function name. So obviously snake case in Rust is typically how that's accomplished. Um, and we can also, you know, just to say we did at a second test, um, Rust has a couple different ways of testing. So like, let's say that, you want a second test that confirms that maybe, I don't know, if you add 3 plus 2, that it should not equal, the result should not equal 4. It should be 5, but we're going to say it's not equal. That's any Q. Just do that. Boom. Not equal. So, we're not. We're gonna, oh, sorry, we need to change the name. It works better. Or, I'm going to really spice it up. More assuredly. There we go. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Is it? I, th I believe it's not any. It's any, e, not any Q. There we go. Perfect. So we now have two tests. It works more assuredly and it works. And as you can see, these names get copied directly from the function. So if you want a more meaningful name, just name your function better, basically. It's that simple. This has been unit testing in Rust. I hope you um, can really see how. Um, useful this is and um, you know if you're considering Rust for another project maybe this is the thing that pushed you over a tipping point and maybe not um, but we'll be doing some more stuff with Rust and various other languages in the future so if you like this short form content please like um, comment subscribe let me know what you want to see more of um, yeah until next time guys